Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I introduce a new upper stage for Starship, this is Star Stage 3. Previously I had made Star Stage 1 which was a kerosene HTP stage that was meant to be very very cheap. Kerosene HTP is relatively easy to handle and it would be able to fling interplanetary probes out to distant locations and it was meant to be for organizations like JPL so that they could use Starship to send the probes direct and fairly heavy probes at that uh, instead of relying on the gravity assists or if they want to send a really heavy probe they could use gravity assists but it was a uh, 130 ton stage so it would require a 9 engine Starship I believe so yeah I don't think this Starship as it is right now would be able to handle quite that mass but we had that, and then we had a reusable second stage. This was a methane oxygen second stage, and it had a heat shield and everything. Obviously, it's the wrong way around right now. And uh, so this was star stage two, a reusable methane oxygen stage that could send things out to the moon and then come back. Uh, it was shaped more like an Apollo command module. It's okay, it's a little bit steeper than Orion or Apollo would be, but that's because it's basically empty coming back. So its ballistic coefficient is okay. Uh, but yeah, from those high locations, it's probably still not good to be dragon shaped necessarily. Uh, but yeah, that was star stage two and that was lighter, but it has the problem that it can't really get out of this bay right now. Um, the opening, it's a little bit too tight for it. So I'll probably have to work on that. I might have to make it shaped more like dragon for it to be able to fit. Uh, so yeah, I don't necessarily want that to change because I think maybe this opening is probably as extreme as they're going to make it anyway. Uh, it depends how how they want to do that. So I mean, of course, we have to wait and see how they make the bay in Starship. But Star Stage 3 is a hydrolock stage, hydrogen and oxygen. So highly efficient. Uh, but we have constraints. First of all, it has to be able to come out of the bay. And with hydrogen and oxygen, that's especially tough because hydrogen likes big tanks, right? So obviously you can't fit like SLS's uh, exploration upper stage in here. That's 8.4 meters. I mean, 8.4 meters is still less than the diameter of Starship, but it would be really tight. So, and of course, not through this opening. So I had to create a stage that would potentially get through this opening, but I don't actually know right now. We have to test that. I haven't tested it yet. Uh, we are going to test whether it can get through this. And um, it has to be within the capacity of this starship. And since I've tested it to 100 tons, I've decided that the actual stage would be 80 tons and it will carry a 20 ton payload. Now it can be a relatively light uh, tank because it's not structurally part of the rocket and I mean, you know, unlike SLS's second stage this is uh, not bearing any of the loads during launch so that part is okay and it's not going to be having a very heavy payload on top of it SLS's upper stage could potentially have to carry 105 tons or whatever the capacity of SLS block 1B is to low earth orbit in theory but this does not. The most this is going to have on top of it is 20 tons. Uh, that said, I just sized the dry mass of this based on the procedural tanks. It's just, um, I took a procedural tank, uh, used the ISO grid uh, procedural tank, uh, that one, and used the aluminum lithium structure, uh, made the tank exactly this size, well, yeah, with the same volume, and then had the RL10 uh, C1-1s at the bottom and the RCS tanks and the controller etc and that's what the dry mass is so I did like that just to have parity with the procedural tanks and so no shenanigans there and my goal with it is with 20 tons it should be able to send that to the moon get into orbit around the moon and also start its descent so we're looking for about 6,000 meters per second out of this with a 20 ton payload. And then the payload will then complete the scent with about 400 meters per second. So that's a lot to ask from a stage. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, that does give us quite a bit of options. That means that now a single starship is a good uh, base module deployer, more or less, because the base module, I mean, 400 meters per second is not much. 
And if you've got a 20 ton base module, 400 meters per second might be like four tons of that. And then you've got 16 tons of base. So that's a lot. So we can do a lot with that potentially. And maybe also we could then also fling things to Jupiter, for instance, 6,000 meters per second is not too far off from that. And it will still be a hefty payload going out there. So let's see if this works. The thing is, it's going to need to have those MLI layers, and we need those MLI layers to actually keep it cool. And we will see how that goes. The engines in this case are integrated into it. And so they're not separate parts. It's just one part that has the RCS, the 4 RL10 uh, C-1 one, uh, one engines for simplicity. But that can also create havoc. Um, I, I didn't consider about power consumption. Actually, let me bring it back. <laughs> we might need solar panels. I did not build in solar panels. I also didn't build in radiators, even though the hydrogen tank looks like it has radiators on it. Okay, I have fixed some staging foibles and we need to line up with the moon in order to test the transfer. I mean, we could do an off-plane transfer, but boil off is an issue in this case, so we don't want to waste too much time. Uh, it looks like it's off-plane transfer or nighttime around here now. I want to launch in daylight. So, okay, we're just using the same script that I tested in the previous video, which allowed Super Heavy to sort of land, but we know it had enough fuel to land, and Starship would have enough fuel to get to, uh, get to orbit and come back. So, run Starship, and let's turn that atmospheric all power off. All right. Okay. So ideally, if I could fit it, I would like the payload on this to be the Kumo lander, but I can't fit it. It was designed for SLS. It has a maximum breadth of 8.2 meters and it can't get out of the bay. We don't even know if this can get out of the bay and this is only 6.2 meters. Well, in its largest dimension, it's more than that. We have to be very careful not to rotate it when we're trying to get it out. So, yeah, otherwise it won't come out. It has to come out directly, which is a little bit of a pickle. But yeah, the Kumo lander is less than 20 tons, so the stage that we have there, the Hydrolock stage, could send it to the moon and do all the things, and then the Kumo lander has enough delta-v to land and then take off from the surface of the moon again. So that would be great, but it can't fit. And it would take a lot to get it to fit right. I'll probably have to come up with a different lander. Same principle, different lander. Okay. And super heavy shutdown, separation, and starship ignition, a shadowy starship heading out here. Okay, and we have reached orbit. Okay, well, now the tough part. Uh, I'd really like to do it in daylight, but uh, we're a little bit past that in particular. Okay, it's really tight though. So that's the payload adapter. Please go out. <laughs> uh, I might have to sneakily make the collider on it a little bit smaller than what it is right now. It's, I think oriented right, so, but yeah, it's just tough. I think we're gonna have to time, I mean, we have to time warp anyway, just to be able to see what to do. But as we time warp, of course, it's gonna potentially get out of Starship. Not that I can see that very easily, but. 
Let's just get it out like that for now. Okay, well we're in daylight now. And it's out, but not the way I want it to come out. I designed it to be able to get out of that aperture. But I guess something is catching, so... I'll have to tighten it up a bit. Well, or at least tighten the colliders. It's difficult. But, alright, let's see if it can do the job. That delta V is obviously wrong. That's less than I wanted. And that's probably because of the solar panels that we added in after the fact. Also, I might not have calculated for the MH Mon 3. Anyway, let's see if everything else is working. Let's try and plot for the moon. Well, the offlane transfer is after quite a while. 13 days. I don't know how much boil off it's going to have. We'll see. So this is just a matter of me wanting to launch in daylight instead of nighttime. Oh, and raining Delta V in Starship is 922, which I think is still good enough for it to come down and land with. Well, the RCS works. Stage time 52 minutes is wrong. I think I forgot to multiply the thrust of the RL-10 by 4. I only put the thrust of one RL-10 on there instead of four of them. Gosh darn it. Okay, well, obviously that won't be any good, but let me check the plumes while we're here. And maybe the boil off as well. I mean, there's clearly boil off. It says 0.00, .00 but it doesn't seem too bad. RF boil off. Milliwatts. It's in milliwatts. So that seems good. 102 tons actually. With the solar panels and MLI layers, which I didn't calculate for. Well, I don't want to do the burn as plotted, so I mean I have to edit the stage. Fix that numerical issue. But it would start to burn somewhere around here. Let's test that. The plumes are okay-ish, but we seem to have an additional sound. I don't know why we have the additional sound. But aside from the accidentally reduced thrust, we seem to be operating properly. Okay, let me fix a few things. Okay, so I've made a few changes, including adjusting the thrust on Star Stage 3 to be the correct thrust, and reducing the size of the collider in the hope that that will save it. And we need to go to a different inclination, but actually... Um, well, I want to head south, it looks like. Let's see... Launch direction, it is going south. Okay. And let's just say 28.5 will do. Okay. Let's see if that helps. And we are going to go. Sorry about the nighttime launch, but it's what the moon wants, and what the moon wants, the moon gets. Okay, well, we can at least see the engines and the plume. But anyway, launch is necessary, but not what we're focused on here. Okay, shutdown of Super Heavy. Very dark. Alright, we'll see what the slight inclination change will do to our eventual Delta V in orbit with Starship. Okay, and we are in orbit. We do have less delta V than before, but we should still have enough. 0.3 degree difference with the moon. And let's just get into daylight before we do anything else. When will our transfer be? Well, it'll be in the dark, but we'll separate off the payload in daylight at least. Okay, no. 
Uh, you can see the nozzles sort of clipping there because I took away the collider off of the nozzles of the engines, but this does not seem to have been enough, has it? Apparently not. It's RCS is on. Yep, it's not getting out. <laughs> Okay, let's see if Starship can do it. Uh, well, yeah, it's uh, it's not doing it. Okay, it's a little bit low on the Delta V now, uh, also. But anyway, we're gonna have to time warp again. Out it goes. Right, not as intended, but. Yeah, not as intended. But let's let's get through everything else. That's obviously not right. Five thousand nine hundred. I put lighter weight solar panels on. There are certain benefits to having a fairing that will just go away. <laughs> Frankly. Okay, go. It's not particularly good at turning. And those look like the stock plumes, don't they? Why are they back on? <laughs> why is why is real plumes not getting rid of them like real plumes normally does? Oh gosh, they, these uh, they weren't here last time, but I changed something in order to get rid of the sound, and instead I got these plumes back. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, we should do the rest with RCS. Well, that's a bit of a much, but yeah, we can still manage with RCS. Okay, that will do. Let's time warp over, the, over there. We do have boil off, but not much, not much. The MLI layers are effective in this case. All right, the ignition. Well, okay, selling the fuel down. Hmm. These seem not so great at selling fuel down. Oh well, okay, we've got it though. And bad plumes. Oh, 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 I already said it on a descent periapsis. I didn't mean to do that, but that's okay, I guess. It'll be in daylight. All right, but what we can see here is we have more delta v than orbital velocity or surface velocity, so it would be able to deliver the payload as we like. Um, the payload is supposed to be able to handle 400 meters per second or so, uh, so this would be good enough for a potential uh, accurate landing at a base, right? We have a little bit of margin here for that. And so we'll do a descent. At this point, this only has 2 minutes and 27 seconds of burn time. So that means that it can do the burn pretty accurately, uh, pretty quickly, you know, basically stopping on a dime. And that's beneficial. Of course, with less of a payload, instead of 20 tons, uh, we could put lander legs on it and it could land, right? I mean, it's not that far off from landing itself. But these engines do not throttle, so that's a downside. It would have to be a suicide burn of dangerous proportions. There are limited ignitions here. I've assumed 10 ignitions for the RL10C 1-1, so we have 7 left. These are not CCs, Common Extensible Cryogenic Engines, which would have more. And throttling. We should replace these with CCs, <laughs> actually. But I, I want it as a, a available option, right? No, this terrain looks good. Okay, let's wait a bit. Let that suicide burn countdown go down a bit. Okay. 
continuing to sell fuel down. Well, it'll at least demonstrate that Lander could have survived. Oh, it's too late to ignite. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway, but I have a few things to fix. The collider issue is going to be tough though. I already made it as small as it can be on this without it being completely unreasonable. Um, I'll double check the colliders on the starship, I guess, and we'll try and give it a little bit more room. But yeah, well, that was Star Stage 3. Not the most inspiring first test, but it didn't really have a proper payload on it. And I'll try to put it to better use once I manage to get out of the bay properly and put a better plume on it. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.